Welcome to my channel. If you like my videos, then kindly subscribe, like, and watch. Thank you. Problem 4.17. The statement of problem is that solve problem 4.16 assuming that D is 40 mm. So you have to take this D as 40 mm. And the rest the problem given problem uh, data is same. Sigma C is equal to 30 megapascal. Sigma tensile is equal to 24 megapascal. And you have to find the largest couple that can be applied to the beam so that is we know that this moment is equal to sigma into i divided by y modulus so this is the same thing so we have to find the position of centroid from this axis so for that we have we divide this into two portion this is portion one this is portion two so one to area y naught bar product of area into y naught bar so area of one member is 40 into 15 that is equal to 600 millimeter square so this is six area of the second portion that is 200 now this is total 40 and this is 15 so this portion will be 25 so this area will be 500 now why not one so why not one this is 15 so half of 15 will be 7.5 so this is 7.5 and total is total is 50 so this remaining distance will be equal to 32.5 so this is why not one so 32.5 similarly why not two that is half of this distance is 40 minus 15 that is equal to 25 layer so 25 half is 12.5 so why not 2 is 12.5 the product of these two will be equal to 19.5 into 10 raised to power 3 and the product of these two will give you 6.25 into 10 raised to power 3 this point now the sum of both area a1 and 2 a2 is 1100 millimeter square and the sum of product of area into y naught bar is equal to 25.75 into 10 raised to power 3 so position of centroid of this beam is using this formula we will calculate so the above value is 25.75 into 10 raised to power 3 and below the sum of area is 1100 so we get y is equal to 23.41 millimeter so this is the position of centroidal axis if i remove uh, the these things from here and represent the same over here so you can see now that uh, this is 25 mm layer this is 25 so from this point your centroidal axis is somewhere some somewhere here so this is the distance that is y and this y is equal to 23.41 millimeter clear now uh, from this centroidal axis this is your centroidal axis from this centroidal axis to the top this is y top and from centroidal to this point this is y bottom so y top will be equal to total is 40 so 40 minus this 23.41 that will give you y top and this, this comes out to be 16.59 millimeter so y top is equal to 0 0.01659 meter so this is y top now y bottom is same that is minus 23 
0.41 millimeter are equal to minus 0.0234 millimeter. So this is y bottom. Now we will find the moment of inertia of above beam. So I will write that that moment of inertia will be equal to I will be equal to I1 plus I2. Again, if uh, so, I will have to draw again. This is the part first, and this is part two, one and two. So, total distance over here is forty. This distance was forty. This distance was twenty-five. This distance was 15 and centroidal axis was somewhere, somewhere here and that distance was 2.23.41. This width was 40 mm, clear mm. All the dimensions are in millimeter. So I1 will be equal to 1 over 12, B is for 1 is 40 mm, so 40 into thickness is 15, 15 square plus area of A1, area was 600 because 40 into 15 is 600 and what is the value of D. Now if this is the mid of portion 1, so this distance is 0 0.75, clear? Now this D comes out to be 9 point, uh, okay we will see how this distance, we, this is D1, this is D1 and how it comes, uh, so this D1 is uh, if you look at, so total distance, this is 23.41, this is uh, this is 25 minus 23.41 so I will write also this distance so 25 let me calculate it 25 minus 23.41 so that is 25 minus 23.41 that is 1.59 so this is 1.59 so 1.59 plus this is 0 0.7 uh, this is 7.25 so 1.59 plus 7.25 that is again 1.59 plus 7.5 sorry 7.5 this is 7.5 i will write it again this is not 7.25 this is 7.5 so you can see that d this distance is equal to 7.5 plus 1.59 that is 9.09 .09. so i will write 9.09 .09 whole square so when you calculate this i1 comes out to be 60.82 into 10 raised to power 3 mm 4 for i2 i2 is equal to 1 over 12 breadth of this is 20 so 20 into height is 25 25 cube plus area is 20 into 25 is 500 so 500 into d square now what is d so if half of 25 is here that is 12.5 this will be 12.5 so this distance is d2 this distance is d2 which is equal to how you will calculate this so if you uh, if you see that uh, the distance of centroid and bottom is 23.41 and the remaining gap is 
1.59 so again if you uh, subtract 25 from 23 23.41 20, from 25 you get 1.59 so 1.59 is this distance from this point sorry from this point till this point and this remaining gap how you will find this gap so this gap is equal to uh, 23 so this gap this d2 here is d2 this is d2 clear this d2 is 10.91 how let me zoom it as so this was total height 25 this was 25 and this is half of it that is 12.5 12.5 and its centroidal axis is at distance of 23.41 so we need to find this d2 so if you look, look at this gap will be equal to 12.5 uh, sorry 25 minus 25 minus 23.41 that is equal to this distance is equal to this distance is equal to 1.59 clear and this is 12.15 clear now this is the center and this is centroidal axis clear so 12.5 so you have to subtract 23 from this so 23.41 minus 12.5 so you have to subtract this dimension 12.5 uh, from 12.3 so you will get this d2 that is equal to 10.91 how 23.41 minus 12.5 so you have to be very careful while calculating this distance because these are tri tricky one so i2 comes out to be 85.55 into 10 is to power 3 mm 4 mm to power 4 now total inertia i is equal to i1 plus i2 that is equal to 60.82 into 10 to the power 3 plus 85.55 into 10 to the power 3 so that will give you total inertia and this total inertia when converted into meter that is equal to 146.383 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter 4 so this is the moment of inertia of given beam now we know that uh, this moment is equal to sigma into i divided by y so for for compression for compression this moment will be equal to sig you have to put this compression stress that is 30 megapascal so 30 into 10 raised to power 6 into i is given as 146 into 10 146.383.383 into 10 raised to power minus 9 divided by y y top now y top we calculated above this is y top so that is 0 0.01659 so 0 0.01659 so moment for compression comes out to be 18.187.6 newton meter so okay
one more thing there is also trick that is given as the moment is given as downward clear so if the moment is given as downward so definitely it will act like this one so top will be in compression uh, sorry tension top will be in tension while bottom is in compression so compression clear so if you take the top value that will be tension so for uh, i will write for top that will be in tension so you have to take the value of tension and the stress for tension is not 30 that was given as 24 megapascal so 24 into this so when you calculate this so the value of movement for tension or for top comes out to be sorry again here is a mistake the top is in tension so tensile stress will be there and the distance okay this is clear okay so if you calculate it this is 212 newton into meter clear so this is movement due to the tension in the top for bottom now due to the figure the bottom will be in compression so we will also find the movement for compression that will be in the below portion so that will be equal to that is 30 megapascal and i is 146.38 into 10 to the power minus 9 now bottom distance is given as minus 0, 0.0 so we will not consider the minus sign because we are taking the absolute so that will be equal to minus 0, 0.02341 and if it, this is absolute value so that will become positive so movements comes out to be 187.6 newton into meter now we again we have two movements that is due to tension in the top and compression in the bottom so for that allowable movement will be the smallest one which is 87.6 newton meter so this much uh, movement is allowed for this Problem. So this movement is equal to 187.6 Newton meter. So again the top if you applied movement like this the top will be in tension and bottom will be in compression. Thank you for watching the video.